So for the, for the purpose of the recording, my name is Barry Adams and this is the weekly fatherheart.tv webcast. It is Wednesday, March the 18th, uh, 2020. And um, today I, I'm talking about uh, something that is affecting pretty much every person on the, on the planet. Um, it's, it's, and maybe not every person, but it, it is certainly, uh, I think the last total that I looked this, this morning was that there's been either 170 countries or regions that have been affected around the world with this, this outbreak of, of the Corona virus. And so I just want to talk about that. I want to talk about, um, uh, when I asked the Lord what to speak about, I, I felt like he, um, not, I'm not saying he said it, but that what I came to mind was Psalm 46. And, and so I want to read that in a, in a minute, the, the whole Psalm, it's a fairly short Psalm. And then, um, yeah, just talk about where we are in the world today and, you know, what is happening and, uh, yeah, just how I believe the Father wants us not to be afraid uh, in the midst of some th things that are pretty scary that are happening in, in our world. But let me just um, just start with praying, and then we will uh, just start. So, Father, I, I we thank you that yeah that that perfect love casts out fear, and we just ask that in this time of uncertainty, in this time of um, yeah, just not really you know so many of the foundations of of the security that we have just in governments and and just just assumptions about health and safety and those things are 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 being shaken right now and we thank you that the foundation of your love can never be shaken your kingdom can never be shaken and so today lord as as we um yeah we just we just uh, together just ponder what it what does it mean to to be safe in your love. How, what does it mean to not fear? What does it mean in the midst of some real uh, scary things happening around the world that Father, that we could still have that peace that passes understanding. So Father, I pray that you would by your spirit just, just settle our hearts even now. Um, just uh, I pray that your Holy Spirit would just quiet us and that we would have an ear to hear what your spirit is saying. Um, to us personally, to our families, to our nations, and, and just as the whole, Father, that we would be able to, to have peace, that we could sleep in the boat in the middle of the storm. Uh, thank you, Jesus, for making all this possible. Thank you that you are the Prince of Peace and you have given your peace to us. We just pray that we would just, um, yeah, just now that your peace would settle. Amen. So uh, today I... When I was thinking of today's webcast, I was reflecting on Psalm 46. And so um, the, the title of, of today's message is Our Ever-Present Help in Times of Trouble. And, and so I just want to read Psalm 46, and this is what it says. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The Lord God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the, uh, the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And I, I really believe that there there is never been a time I think in in um, probably certainly in, in in my lifetime you know that these words um, as far as globally I, I you know I know people have had wars they've had uh, outbreaks they've had all these things we've all had calamity personally in our lives uh, to deal with but I think from a global scale and from the 
in the sense of the uncertainty of what is happening now that these words I, I don't think there was ever a time globally where the this promise that God is our refuge and our strength and an ever-present help in our time of trouble is more applicable than than today and um, I'm not sure where you live in the world and what is happening in your own world but it it seems like things have just kind of um, totally changed for us we we live in Canada and in the last week like a week ago even though you know the coronavirus was around the world and there was concern and and all these things it seems like in the last week things have shifted for our own nation um, and what things appeared to be relatively normal but with an eye on the outbreak and containing it uh, things have just changed the the even the term social distancing is is a brand new term for many people. Uh, a week ago, uh, in the in of course, Canada is on the border of the U.S. and and it was like something kind of clicked in. I think it was Wednesday when President Trump banned all travelers from Europe that were non-residents. And by the weekend, so it, it again a week ago, I was teaching at the school of ministry. Everything was fairly normal, but by the weekend, it was like everything had changed. Uh, U.S. Uh, had declared a national emergency our own province declared a national emergency uh, Canada closed its borders to all uh, foreigners non-residents and even this morning uh, Canada and the US again this is the largest undefended border in in the world um, the Canada and US agreed to limit the um, the travel across from Canada and the U.S. Uh, of the, our borders to just uh, essential travel. So all non-essential travel has stopped as of today. So, uh, you know, it's, and I'm sure where you're living, if you're living in Europe, of course, the things are extreme in, in many countries and borders are being shut down. There's so, so much uncertainty in the world today. And and so uh, one of the things that I want to talk about first is, is kind of, um. I think there's a, a healthy sense of fear, or I would say respect, um, and then there is an unhealthy sense of, of fear. Um, and I'll give you an example of this. And I, th I think, in, in my own my own life, I I actually had a, a, an encounter when I was camping, you know, quite a few years ago, where a black bear ended up chasing me. Now, when a black bear chases you, um, if you're not afraid, you should be. And 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 it's it, there's something that God has created in the human body, where when there is this you know this burst of adrenaline when we need to run away from an animal or or something is fearful. So in in, in essence, that's kind of a healthy sense of fear, right? That something comes to mind and we have to deal with it, and we have the adrenaline and the surge to do that. And you know, I'm here today to say that I, I it wasn't like I outran the bear, but we were able to um, get away from the bear. But the, the, the fear was, in a sense, a healthy fear in the moment, right? So, like, if if you have a, a natural fear of sharks or of of lightning, and you're not, you know, you're not going to stand on a on a the, a rooftop with a metal pole in the lightning storm. That is healthy. That is normal. That is right. That's something that we, you know, it's really having a, a healthy sense. But in, like, for instance, with this bear, you know, I had this healthy sense of surge, a surge that caused me to to action in the moment to get away from the bear. But an un, well, how I would describe an unhealthy sense of fear is if I lived in a chronic terror of that bear either before it ever happened or or afterwards. So that means I couldn't be at peace. I was afraid that a bear might chase me, uh, that I, you know, whether it's the memory of it or again, an anxiety, anxiety where I'd say I might have another future episode. And I think that is an unhealthy fear. And see what happens with a lot of us when we struggle with fear, from what I understand, it's, it's like this adrenaline that's meant to be temporary, don't run, you know, uh, an animal chasing us becomes chronic it's it's something that's released where this adrenaline and and we're dealing with fear all the time and that's where it it moves from being kind of a healthy sense of respect for things and and to an unhealthy sense of where we become obsessed with things and uh, i think in the situation that we're in today um i'm not again i'm not sure i can only speak for myself i can 
you know, have a little bit more of an insight into what's happening in Canada and maybe the, the U.S. as well. But when we turn on the, the news, there is a, a deluge of, of media reporting that is, a lot of it is rooted in, in fear. And again, there's this fine line of healthy respect, you know, things that we should do, and I'm all for that. But when we're getting that nonstop every day, uh, you know, I just want to, you know, unpack and just ask God to speak into if there's anything in either, any of us that is dealing with unhealthy senses of fear as a result of this. Um, and, you know, I think that as Christians, we we know the truth. We're familiar with the, the biblical promises. And, and it's it's something that, you know, I think that we're, we can wrestle with and even feel maybe even guilty if we feel afraid because, you know, we know that we're not supposed to be afraid. But again, I think it's it's the wisdom to ask God, okay, what is a healthy sense of respect and, and being able to manage this versus going into an, an unhealthy end of things? And I think we all need wisdom. Um, like, again, with a, with a bear, right? You, you know, I wouldn't want to kind of tempt or test my faith by jumping into a going to a zoo and going into a bear cage, you know, to say, okay, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm going to be wise. I'm going to exercise wisdom. And I think in our current situation with this worldwide global pandemic of the Corona virus, I think, you know, we, it isn't really wrong in the sense to have a healthy fear or respect uh, of, of the, just the guidelines to obey our government's do the best to limit our social action. Again, social distancing, which is a new term for me, um, that we could, you know, be responsible citizens in public health and love our neighbors as we love ourselves. You know, keep our distances. You know, don't be in a place where we have we can spread things, and um, don't take any unnecessary risks. Right. But I I just want to encourage you today that if you are feeling afraid, if you're struggling with the uncertainty um, of of don't be so hard on yourself. I, I just feel, um, I think I, as Christians, sometimes I think we judge each other if we struggle with fear, you know, and we think that fear is an indication of our lack of faith. And to be honest, that isn't helpful. That that just makes things worse. I mean, if we're struggling with something that is, causes us to be afraid and then we feel condemned for fear, I just think it's a spiraling eddy, you know, like a, just a nonstop whirlpool of, of condemnation and feeling bad and fear. And I just want to encourage you today. I really believe that God understands when we struggle with fear. Uh, fear is just part of the fabric of the brokenness of, of our humanity. You know, we do live in a scary world, and especially now. And I think sometimes when people struggle with this, um, I think that, um, you know, we, we sometimes we, we're even afraid to be honest with God about these kinds of struggles. And I just feel that uh, the Father, like, when, when we come to him in honesty about what we wrestle with, he doesn't judge us. He doesn't condemn us. He doesn't, um, you know, push us away. He actually has compassion on us. In Psalm 103, verse 13 and 14, King David is talking about this, about God and his father's heart for us. And he says, as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. And, and so... You see, I think sometimes when we struggle with things, uh, God sees through all the veneer, right? He sees through all our bravado and our in things that we're trying to pretend things are that which they are. And and when He sees our frailty, I, I, and I'm not saying about giving license to stay in fear, but it's He doesn't judge us. He has compassion on us, and and that's why. Like he gets it. He knows that we came from dust. He knows, he remembers how we are made and he has a, he has compassion for us. And, and that's why, and I don't know ex the exact number. Some people say it's 365 times. I don't think it's quite that many, but I think it's at least over 300 times in the Bible. There is a, an encouragement for us not to be afraid. And, uh, you know, it's fear not, or don't be afraid. And, and the reason why there are so many encouragements not to be afraid, I believe, is because we have a tendency to be afraid. And so Father doesn't judge us with it. He just 
wants us not to be afraid. He wants to calm the fear. He wants to deal with the anxiety. He wants to deal with the chronic stress that is caused from a root of worry and fear and uncertainty about our life. And it's interesting when you look at in Joshua in the Old Testament, and of course, he was Moses' sidekick for 40 years. You know, he was there waiting at the base of the mountain when, when Moses went up, got the, met with God, saw his back, you know, it got the, 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 the tablets, came down, and, and, you know, Moses' face was shining. It said they had to put a veil on it because the glory of God was shining so much. So Joshua was with Moses this whole time. I mean, Moses was a friend of God. He hung out with God. He, he heard from God, and he was the vessel in which God spoke to Israel. So could you imagine what Joshua was dealing with when Moses died? I mean, he was gone, and it was Moses' dream to go into the promised land, and he couldn't even fulfill that dream. So now in Joshua 1, God speaks to Joshua, and he says to Joshua, in my paraphrase, you're the man. You are the one. And can you imagine what was what Joshua was dealing with? And if you think, oh, Joshua was full of faith, he had no problem. If we read Joshua 1 verses 1 to 9, and, and I won't read it, read it all. I'll read a, a couple of scriptures. It is very clear that he must have been struggling uh, with, with fear because in in, in starting in verse 6 or verse 5, uh, God is speaking to Joshua and he's trying to gird him up. He's trying to build him up, right? And he says, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give. So that's number one, be strong and courageous. Verse seven, he says, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to, to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. And then in verse nine, he says it again. And now he says to, to Joshua, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. You see, I really believe that God wouldn't have said to, to Joshua, don't be afraid. You know, be strong and courageous three times. And the last one, he said, don't be afraid. I'm going to be with you, Joshua. Don't worry. Where you go, I go. And and I think this is one of the things that, that I believe that, um, you know, when we deal with what we're dealing with on a global scale, it is the most natural thing in the world that fear would be, be like we live in a world system that is terrified right now our governments are not knowing what to do they're struggling they're doing their best and there's so much uncertainty and and i just want to encourage you that if you're struggling with these things the father understands he's not judging you he's not saying you know shape up or ship out he's just saying oh be courageous you see when we talk about courage, the, the actual English definition of courage is the ability to do something that frightens one. Uh, or, or another definition is strength in the face of pain and grief. And see, one of the things that I, you know, when we talk about courage, if courage isn't the absence of fear. Courage is in the presence of fear. And so when the father uh, comes to Joshua, in, in Joshua 1, and, and I, you know, I'm sure he's, he, Joshua's just overwhelmed that he has to lead the people into the promised land against, and were the giants real? Yeah, of course they were real. It wasn't like the fear that Joshua was, uh, was struggling with was something that was in his own mind. There's oftentimes in our life, there are real things that are scary, but it's in the presence of fear and in circumstances that are screaming out that cause us to be afraid. I believe the father wants to come to each one of us in, as a father would speak to a son, as a father would speak to a daughter and say, oh, my little one, just be of good courage. Be strong and courageous. I'm with you. Don't be afraid. You don't have to be afraid because I am with you. See, I don't think faith is, you know, faith is not negating our circumstances. We would be foolish if we didn't acknowledge that there are troubles in this world. There's no wisdom in denying the obvious. Faith is just choosing 
to believe what the father of light says over what the father of lies says. You see, I, I believe that, that, yeah, I just think that there is a struggle that we have. And as Christians, oftentimes we feel guilty because because we're afraid. And then we think, oh, we shouldn't be afraid. And then and then we beat ourselves up. But I just want, I just feel the Father just saying, at least to me, and maybe, you know, hopefully it, it, it means something to you, that, that in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the uncertainty, he's with us. And, and even in no matter what we go through in life, that, that there is a comfort knowing that, that he will, where we go, he goes. You know, Jesus said in John 16, 33, he said, I've told you these things so that in me, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. When Jesus talked to his disciples, he said, he didn't say it's gonna be, you know, um, you know, cherries and whipped cream and apple pie, and it's going to be easy peasy. He said, you're going to have some trouble. In this light world, you're going to have trouble, but be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. You see, it's, it's, it's not that we have an absence of trouble, but it's, it's about being able to be awakened in the core of our being to know that in the midst of anything that comes our way, that, that God is is that ever-present help in our time of trouble. You see that the psalmist in, in Psalm 46 acknowledges that we have trouble, but no matter what trouble comes our way, the, the presence of God, the love of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God is greater than anything that will oppose us. In Philippians 4, verse six and seven, Paul writes these words, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And one of the things that, that I wanna encourage you, that how do we have the peace of God? Why do we have the peace of God? In verse nine, after Paul writes these words that, that the peace of God, which transcends understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Verse nine says, and the, co the God of peace will be with you. You see, it's not our trials, it's not our circumstances, it's not the, the, all of the moving parts of a very scary world system and an uncertain you know, pandemic that we don't know where we're going, but it's the very sense of the presence of God, the God of peace, is with us in Romans 16 Paul is, is is speaking to the Romans church and he says the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet see it's not you and I trying to manage it trying to you know trying to navigate trying to to think ourselves out of things but it's just being able to to understand I believe in a deeper way than ever before that the God of peace is with us and because the God of peace is with us that, that we can, in every situation, by prayer and petition, and with thanksgiving, present our request to God. That we, that we can say, Father, you know, to be honest and to be real in our struggles, but know that God is with us. You see, God has always promised to be with us. And that's where, where it says in th um, Hebrews 13:5. It says, God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. And see, these are the words that, that God spoke to Joshua in the old covenant. You know, and of course, how much better is the new covenant that you and I are in, where the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit live within us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are the resting place of the Trinity inside each and every one of us. So when all of these external things come our way and we're afraid and we re, you know, we're watching the news and probably two thirds of the content of every news program, whether it's Canada or the US, it's on the coronavirus right now and what is happening. And, and if we're not careful, we get bombarded by this and, and perhaps we forget that the God of peace is with us through it. It doesn't mean that there aren't difficult things that we're dealing with, but in through everything, he is with us. You see, when in the early days, of, of our daughter's treatment, for those who know, our, our youngest daughter was diagnosed with, with uh, leukemia uh, over five years ago now, five and a half years ago, and we were terrified. 
Ann and I, and you know, and you probably heard it said if you haven't experienced it, but but when there's something, you know, when a parent watches their child suffer, there there is something that is nothing like that um, to deal with. And and Ann and I were we were terrified. We in in the first month of her diagnosis, it was so aggressive. We didn't know if she she would survive. And now, if I would have went to God and said, you know what, you know, I, I just make every declaration of your goodness and your mercy and your grace, I'm not afraid, I, uh, I wouldn't have been honest. But the way that I went to, to the Father in the midst of that, it was just to be honest, to acknowledge that I was absolutely terrified. And, that, and, and it was being able to, as 1 Peter 5 says, 5, 7 says, cast every care onto his strong shoulders because he cares for you. You see, when we, with integrity, are honest about our struggles and say, Father, I'm just struggling with this. I'm worried. I'm afraid. You know, and it's not like, you know, he wants us to stay there, but that is a meeting point where we can be honest with God. And, and it was in that place of our honesty and saying we were terrified and we were helpless that the Father's comfort came. And in 2 Corinthians 1, 3, and 4, Paul writes, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. And you see, in that situation with our daughter, and we were going through daily chemotherapy with her, walking through that for two and a half years. And so this was a, you know, the, the, the hardest struggle that we've ever experienced in our life. But it's the most amazing thing happened in the midst of that, in the midst of the struggle, in the midst of the honesty, in the midst of facing fears and being real. It was like we experienced the kindness of God. We experienced the love of God. Uh, it, at, at a level that we had never experienced before. It wasn't like we were absent of trouble, but in the midst of the trouble, there was peace in the storm. And it's interesting when I began to see that God is called the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, the, the Latin word for compassion is compassio, which means to suffer together. And when you begin to understand how the Father is close to you and I, he, you know, he is with us wherever we go. Then we begin to understand Psalm 34, 18, which says the Lord is close to the, the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. You see, God is the closest to us when we are brokenhearted. And, and he's not leaving us. He's not abandoning us. He's not rebuking us because of our lack of faith and unbelief. He understands but he doesn't want us to stay in that place of unbelief and lack of faith and fear but he wants to come and he wants to bring comfort and when i began to understand this you know there was a a, a day when i was uh, at the end of a long day at a hospital with our daughter not knowing if she'd survive i was going to get our car in the darkness i was walking and i asked the father you know i was just on autopilot i just where are you father i don't feel your presence you know it wasn't like i was feeling this this supernatural peace that was carrying me. I was, I felt like I was on autopilot. And it was at that moment that God um, awakened you know, my senses and I began to see where he was in the midst of this incredibly stressful time in our life. He was walking alongside of me, silently suffering alongside with me. You see, he was so identifying with my pain. He was sharing in my sufferings. Because he's a father of compassion, and that word compassion means to suffer together. And it was when there, when there was this awareness of his nearness in the midst of our, uh, midst of our heartache, the, the level of comfort that came was, was beyond words, beyond what I could describe. You see, I truly believe that today, no matter what is happening in your world, in your community, um, in your country, in, with coronavirus or any other things that you and I are struggling with, that the Father wants you to know how close he is to you. Where you go, he goes. Uh, Jesus said, I'm going to be with you to the very ends of the earth. God says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I am with you wherever you go. And if we are able to, to really, really awaken to the nearness of God and his kindness in the midst of no matter what happens in our life. I truly believe that it's just the, 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 
the roots of the love of God will go deeper into the soil of our heart. And um, Romans 8, 35 to 39, Paul is talking about um, the revelation of love that comes in the midst of hardship. And he says this, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And if you, if you read what Paul says, he said, I am convinced. And other Bible translations in English say, I am persuaded. There, it was a time in Paul's life, obviously, that he wasn't convinced because he needed to be convinced. He wasn't persuaded, but at this point in his life, he was persuaded. No matter what happened, nakedness, famine, danger, sword, persecution, hardship, trouble, anything that would come, he came to a place in his life where he realized at a level, it is right in the very core of his being that nothing in all creation could separate him from his love, from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, the truth of the matter is, is that separation from the love of God is an illusion. It does not exist. So today, if you are struggling, if if you are feeling even isolated, you know, we live in a in a community now that we we have to, you know, for the most part, other than shopping, we have to stay at home. Many people are feeling alone. Many people are feeling isolated. If you're feeling in any way separated from the nearness of God, from the love of God, I want to encourage you that that is not the truth. That is an illusion. Because no matter what happens, there is nothing in all creation that can separate us from his love. And in, in, as a matter of fact, in verse 37 of Romans 8, Paul says, I am convinced that, um, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. So, I, I really believe that the Father wants to meet us where we're at today. If you're afraid with, and, and yeah, there are a lot of things to be afraid about right now. There are a lot of uncertainties in life. My encouragement to you today is to be honest with God. Just declare to him, uh, you know, I'm struggling with this. I'm afraid. Father, would you come and would you pour your love? Would you pour your comfort? Would you pour just a sense of peace that passes understanding, that it would guide, guard my heart, guard my mind, that, you know, in, the, in, in a world that is, is terrified and the media is continually talking about these things, that I truly believe that we can have a peace that is beyond circumstance, beyond, beyond even any kind of rational thought. It passes our reason. It passes our understanding because of the nearness of God, because God, the God of peace, is with us wherever we go. You see, there's a story in Mark chapter 9, verse 14 to 29, where this, this man came to Jesus and, and, and said, you know, my son is demonized, you know, can you, can you heal him? And then Jesus said to him, well, all things are possible if you believe. And this man, in his honest prayer to God, you know, he didn't go back and say, Lord, I believe, and he, make, he made all these declarations. What he said to Jesus was this, Lord, I believe help the areas of my life where I don't believe or help me overcome my unbelief. You see, he was honest. He said, I believe at one level, but on another level, I struggle to believe. Do you know that that kind of honest prayer was enough for Jesus to heal the, the young man? You see, when we come to, to the Lord, and I believe that he, even right now that I believe his compassion is here, his love is here, his mercy is here, his kindness is here, that the Lord, the love of God is, is wrapping you and surrounding you. He understands what you're struggling with and he doesn't judge you, he doesn't condemn you. He just says, I'm here for you. Don't be afraid, little one. Where you go, I go. I will be with you to the ends of the earth. There's nothing in all creation that can separate you from, from my love that is in Jesus Christ. 
See, God's love is in us. God's love is around us. God's love is carrying us. He's before us. He's behind us. He's above us. He's beneath us. And the more that we can be awakened to that, the more that we will be able to nestle into his love. 1 John 4, 16 says, And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God lives in them. You see, I truly believe that today is a fresh opportunity for you and I to be able to um, bring all of our concerns, all of our worries, all of our fears to God. And you don't, I just want to encourage you today, you don't have to deal with fear. God never created you to have to, to get rid of fear out of your own life. You know, in a, in a, broken orphan world system maybe you know we have to self-talk our, our think ourselves out of things you know we have to look in the mirror and make all these declarations but in the kingdom of god it's not us that has to deal with fear it's perfect love that casts out fear all we need to do is come to god transparently honest and you know if we're not honest if we're trying to have this veneer of that we're not afraid, but we're afraid. The Father loves us through that. He understands why we would even think that. But I just want to encourage you today that there is no fear in love and that it's the perfect love of God that will cast out that chronic fear. And I'm saying, do we do we obey our government? Of course we do. Do we stay away from people? Of course we do. Do we practice all of the this, you know hand washing and doing everything that we can because this is a real concern? Of course we do. And that is a, a healthy, natural respect for what is happening. It's submitting to our governments. All those things are good. But it's when they transition from this healthy respect and fear of, of what could happen in our own communities to a chronic fear where we are afraid and we live in fear and we dream and we every all of our interactions are rooted in fear. See, I truly believe that you know, in this world, we will have trouble, but I, I believe there is a, a perception, a, um, a, something that God can wants to shift in us, in a, the way we see things, that, uh, that we can fix our eyes on the unseen today and not on the scene. If we look at our circumstances, we look at our, uh, you know, the counts uh, the, every day that are growing around the world with the coronavirus, it can be very discouraging and fearful but i believe even today in the midst of what we're going through i believe the father wants us to raise our gaze in psalm 3 3 it says but you lord are a shield around me my glory and the one who lifts my head high i truly believe that the father wants to take his finger and this is kind of figuratively put it under your chin if you're downcast and he wants to raise your chin so that, that he could, you, he's the glory and the lifter of your head. So that you can see a perspective that is beyond the earth, beyond the natural, beyond our current circumstances. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 16 to 18, Paul writes this. Therefore we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but is what, what is unseen is eternal. And of course, in Hebrews 12, uh, we talk about verses 1 and 2. It, it talks about that we're to run our race and because we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses and throw off the everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us and let, let us run with perseverance the race marked for us. And verse two says, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. And I, I really believe no matter what is happening today in the world that we're, we're living in, and I'm not, I'm not negating any of the scary things that you and I are dealing with, we're all being affected uh, 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 with this in, incredible, scary situation. And you know, our prayer of course is that, that God in his mercy and his grace it would just bring healing to every, uh, every hurting person, every sick person, that this, this, you know, this 
this virus would just be cursed and die in Jesus' name and that you know we could have some restoration of, of normalcy. But even in the midst of the struggles, even in the midst of the negative reports, I, I believe that the Father wants us to open the eyes of our heart in a way that we see his kingdom. Ephesians 1.17 says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. You see, I believe that, I, I just want to end by, by, by praying a, a prayer over you that God today would just fill you with a greater revelation of love. And, and I'm just gonna put the, the music on now. And, and I, I, just, it, I just wanna speak to you in, in your circumstance. And I don't know where you live, I don't know what you're dealing with. But if there's anything in, in your world that is causing you to be afraid, that you are feeling like you're surrounded by troubles, I, my encouragement that, that you would know that God, your Father, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the triune God lives in you and that God is an ever-present help in your time of trouble. And that even though the nations are, are coming off the, the rails with, with panic and fear and anxiety, I, I believe that for the people of God that there is a promise of, of peace and rest because God is with us wherever we go. So I would just encourage you just to to open your heart right now. And I just, I wanna pray Paul's prayer from Ephesians 3 for each and every one of us, that we would be filled to the full measure of the fullness of God, because it's not about us dealing with fear. It's about the love of God being poured into our hearts by the spirit which he's given us. And it's perfect love that comes from God, who brings comfort to us, who identifies with our struggle. And it's his perfect love that casts out fear. So would you be willing today just to ask the Father, show me any areas in my life that I struggle. In this, in this uncertain world that we're living in right now, Father, would, you just, would, you, would your love just come and would your love just cast out fear, your perfect love from my heart, and that I would be able to come into a place of, of peace, from the Prince of Peace and that the God of Peace would crush Satan under my feet. So I'm just gonna read as you just continue to receive, I just want to read Ephesians, the prayer of Paul starting at Ephesians 3, 14. For this reason I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you might be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we all ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. You see, I believe that where you go, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit goes. And he understands when we are afraid. That's why he says, be of good courage and be strong. I'm with you, don't be afraid. I'm with you wherever you go. I understand why you're afraid. That's why I'm telling you not to be afraid. And my perfect love will cast out fear. You see, I just, I just want to end today and just again, just reading Psalm 23 and, and, and just declaring that over you. And then at the end of me reading Psalm 23, I, I'm going to um, switch to a, a promise video that we have called an ever-present help, uh, which is 40 of the promises of God. But 
um, and that'll be a video at the end of this, but I just want to encourage us to have the perspective of King David, where we know the nearness of God, where we go, he goes. We, in the midst of all of this crazy world that we're living in right now, we, we don't have to live in fear. Yet God understands why we do, but we don't have to live there because his love will carry us and comfort us and strengthen us. And if we have fear of the future, if we have fear of provision, we have fear of our own health or the health of our loved ones, I believe that the perfect love of God can come and calm all of those fears. So I just want to read Psalm 23 as I end, and then I am going to switch over to the the video that we um, of the promises just to for you to soak in his goodness. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the, the right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And all God's people said, Amen. I just want to encourage you now just to prepare your hearts as you just watch this video and just be comforted by the promises that come from your Heavenly Father.